now, but Chandler Morris, uh, Garrett, if you wouldn't mind, Chandler Morris, uh, this is from our buddy Steven Johnson, the Star-Telegram, will be out for a while after getting injured against Iowa State. Great win for the Cyclones. Josh Hoover, who played at Heath High School in Rockwall, will start against BYU on Saturday. I, um, that I watched that game the other night. Uh, Garrett and I were here, and Iowa State physically beat them up. I mean, it was – they had the Jack Trice uniforms on. It was hopping in Ames, and they were out for blood against TCU. They just – every time that, you know, they got a chance to deliver a punishing hit, they did it. They absolutely – that was a Matt Campbell dream game right there. He Everything he likes about – the way his team plays when they're at their best. They did that the other night. Um, running game was really, really effective. And uh, Chandler Morris not being there is, is going to be tough. TCU, um, they just – they also run that same offense that Oklahoma does, but they, they may not have the right personnel for it just yet because they're not moving as fast as you would think. So – uh, we'll, we'll see what happens with them down the line, but that's a that's a tough loss for a few weeks for them in the midst of the conference season that they're not playing all that great in. All right, go ahead, Craig. Well, four interceptions are great to have yeah. for any football team, and that's what Iowa State had on Saturday off of uh, three different uh, TCU throwers. Um, so you had uh, both your quarterbacks and also your wide receiver and J.P. Richardson attempting to pass, and that was picked off. Uh, so four interceptions. Um, you also had, you know, a great game on the ground for the Cyclones. I feel like with TCU, it's just like, who are they and what are they trying to be and what are they actually good at? And, and I don't really know because, you know, one week it's like, oh, the defense looks like it's back together. And then, you know, the next week it's maybe not quite as as good as you expected. But, yeah, I mean, that was a tail kick and, and that was an impressive showing by Iowa State. You know, with what they went through in the offseason, you just wonder, like, how is this team going to react? Uh, react? And then they kind of start off slow and – um, you wonder, you know, there's the murmurs about like, hey, is Matt Campbell lost his magic or is this team still ailing from, uh, you know, what happened with the gambling probe and losing their quarterback, losing their running back and all of that. And um, you know what? They've just stuck together and now find themselves at three and three. They're above 500 in conference play. Uh, you know, TCU is not a game that I think you circled at the beginning of the year and felt like, oh, well, that's a win. Um, maybe you thought there was a chance because of what all they lost. But, you know, to, to have the, the frogs roll into town and to, you know, Beat them up. I mean, like you said, it was close in the first half, but they, you know, took care of business in that second half. And, um, yeah, just really impressed with with Iowa State. Just stay in the course. Nothing super sexy or fancy about it. Just Iowa State football. Like you said, the uniforms, uh, the throwbacks to Jack Trice were pretty cool looking. And, um, yeah, they just, they just had it on Saturday. And, and TCU, I mean, whether it's turnovers or special teams miscues or – Average to the quarterback play. Um, obviously, Chandler Morris is not going to play for a while, as you said. I do think that's a blow, but I don't think that that's like a crushing blow because I don't think he was playing so great that that's like, oh, the whole season's derailed now. Um, but, yeah, they're, they're just out of whack, and, and I really thought I was wrong. I thought that they'd be able to, you know, use the transfer portal and plug some holes, and not that they would be Max Duggan-level good, um, but you got to remember, too, my perception of Chandler Morris is tainted by the performance against Baylor a couple years ago yeah, yeah. where he came in and just looked like Johnny football against them. And so that's what I saw, and that's what's just kind of stuck in my head. But he is not that. He is <laughs> not that on a week-to-week -week basis. He is a young quarterback with some flaws who's got a long way to go. And I think that that's shown. I think just TCU in general has shown that, yeah, you can go hit up the transfer portal. But when you're talking about replacing a, you know, a once-in-a-decade quarterback – and receiver and defensive back and you know and all this and your offensive line as much as anything else is probably your biggest issue. Yeah, that's just that's hard. It's easier said than done. And so um, you know TCU is learning that lesson right now. All right, let's look at the. I just asked the chat room, and then we're going to read a couple of them, and we're going to go to the top twenty-five, and then a couple of points about 